Hello everyone. I'm gonna do something. So yeah, that's it. Bye. My project that I'm gonna share with you, it's probably gonna go wrong in many ways, is to go on a trip, but not a short vacation trip, more of an adaptation of the lifestyle. So convert a static lifestyle from a, from a house into a very mobile one in a car. So I, I don't really have the right car to do this, but I'm gonna be living in the car. But I also like comfort, so it's, it's not a car adapted for that at all. And it's really a basic car, I didn't buy it for this project, but now I have it, so I'm gonna work with this. So I'm gonna convert it into a place to sleep and also live for maybe a very long time. It's a Dacia Sandero. And actually when you bend all the seats down like this, you have a, a certain length from the trunk to the front that is more than two meters long, so it's enough to to sleep, uh, which is very important. You need to get some good sleep. My idea is to build some kind of casing and, and bed retractable that allows to store things like uh, the food and the battery and the ammunition and also that allows a good surface for sleep. So I'm gonna go make that on my computer because that's what I'm really good at. And then I'm gonna try to assemble it. And that's the part where I'm gonna realize that I'm really not good at crafting, that I probably imagine certain things that are totally not doable. And that's the part where things are gonna go wrong. So let's go do that. Let's see if I can make this and take off and go in an unplanned expedition for as long as possible without stinking too much at the end. Okay, let's go. First step was taking measurements in the car. Everything has weird irregular shapes in the car, so you have to be very careful and measure everything several times. And when you come back the next day, you realize that the car's shape changed overnight. I had a vague idea of how to utilize the space, so I started noting the measurements I needed to make the bed on the right half of the car. Here's the first model I came up with using metallic telescopic tubes as a frame, which would allow the bed to fully retract into the trunk if needed. But the metal worker I found wanted $900 to make that frame, so I came up with V2, all in wood, with an interlocking system to attach it to the trunk box. But the problem was that this long plank of wood would take a lot of space in the car and be hard to take out. So I had to split the bed into two more parts that would allow to easily free up the passenger seat. Then I got carried away and added this storage area in the trunk here, along with a drawer on the rail here that will open up from the back of the trunk. At this stage, I'm really hoping that this locking system to connect the middle part of the bed to the trunk box will keep the bed pretty sturdy. After several hours of tweaking, it was time to take it all apart in order to get the full list of the boards that we needed and send the order to the wood shop. So today I'm very excited because I finally received the planks of wood to build the Sandy Home. Sandy Home. Sandy Home. The Sandy Home. So let's check out what the wood color shop. Ooh! So I have all these planks. Ah, there's even more underneath. So now, I'm gonna protect the wood and then try to see if I can manage to put all this shit together. To protect the wood, I wanted to find something that is not uh, too chemical, like an industrial varnish that's gonna stink up the car and I'm gonna be breathing for 12 hours a night. So this is flaxseed or linseed oil. So it's actually a super healthy, a very good uh, kind of oil and it's perfect for, for the wood. The problem is uh, it's just oil, so it's uh, super greasy. Many people I talked to online said the wood would stay oily, but this one guy said after a few days of drying in the sun, his garden table was totally dry, so I'm gonna trust the natural way to work out. We'll see. It gives a nice little tint, a little chalet tint, huh? It looks very cozy and it smells really good. A lot of people say that flaxseed oil stinks, but this is really nice, it smells healthy, so if it smells like this in the car, uh, it's gonna be real luxury there. The only thing now is I really hope this is gonna, the wood is gonna drink the oil enough and it's gonna dry enough. Otherwise, it's gonna be really oily in there. So I'm gonna let this uh, sit for a few days. Drink the oil, let's go. So now it's been drying a few days, so we're just gonna remove excessive flaxseed oil. Almost done. 
And it's gonna be the moment where I'm gonna start trying to put everything together. So it's gonna be the moment where we find out if I have any idea what I'm doing, if I know how to attach uh, planks together with screws and glue, and if I messed up the measurements because everything has to fit pretty tightly in the car. It's a pretty tight fit, so now it's kind of the key moment to know how much I messed up. It's so tight. It's exactly the right size. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Wow, insane. Look how it touches here and here. It's exactly the right size. Oh yeah. Okay, that's a good start. Actually, two planks were slightly too tall, so I asked my friend Steven to remove one centimeter with his circular saw and his approximative workbench. Another thing I learned on this adventure is a wonderful and essential tool to use when you're attaching boards together in an angle. The 90 degree corner tool. Your planks of wood each get held in place like this in a perfect 90 degree angle. So while you let your glue dry or drill holes, everything stays in place. Get a big one like this. Don't get the tiny cheap baby ones. The method I used to attach the boards is I think a good combination of several simple techniques I found online, ensuring the best possible solidity for the least complicated technique. First, apply the glue and always spread it out evenly. Then set your board in place and lock it down with the corner tool. Now we're going to drill each hole two times. First with a mesh, just slightly smaller than the diameter of your screw. Drill the full length of the screw. Then get a mesh equal or slightly wider than your screw and drill again, but this time only the first board. So calculate how deep you drill so you're not drilling into the second board again. This is because we want the screw to be loose on the first board and tight in the second. The screw is not supposed to grip both boards, only the second. It will be much tighter like this. See? Very tight screwing. Okay, now we repeat the operation with all the other boards according to the plan. And now it's starting to look like something, huh? It's uh, very solid too. Oh yeah, this is a little extra reinforcement I made just now on top of the plane so that when I sleep, it's very solid at my feet level. Because I noticed that I have very heavy feet. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, it's the precision here is higher than uh, a fraction of a millimeter. Huh? You can't do this if you're going to be very approximative millimeter wise. Well, ever be approximative millimeter wise. Oh, this goes in so perfectly. I don't have to do anything, it's just prepared so well that it just goes in like butter. Oh, my heavenly balls. This is the middle section of the trunk box, and these little vertical bars are support for the cover of the storage, which will also be the lower part of the bed. Time to do a test in the car. Oh yeah. So far, it fits. I'm very happy with this. It fits to perfection. So this is the storage part. This, it's completely not finished, huh? The only thing I have to solve is that here, the drawer here, that is supposed to come out. I made it so perfectly tight that here, when it comes out, it's gonna bump against this. So that is a problem. I have to figure that out. So gonna bump into here. So maybe I'm gonna have to bring this with a 
about today, I don't really use words, huh? you understand what I mean? Like this, like this, so that then, like this, but then I have to cut the drawer smaller from this. Okay, I'm glad you understand everything. Here's the last big complicated part. Well, at least complicated for me. Now I just spent uh, nine hours calculating how to fix this. I've been dreading that this is not gonna fit for months. You really have to check your calculations several times because if you want the drawer to stick tightly to the rail, it will be yet another case of millimeter-wise precision. Here we are witnessing one of the most stress-relieving moments of the entire construction. Just finished this little extra mini shelf that's gonna go in the back here. Maybe. A little extra storage like this. Here's the back of the cabinet. We're gonna have this little bullshit here go here so that I can have stuff here that won't just roll out of the cabinet. I hope you enjoyed this shot with the tube of glue right in the middle. I'm almost about to screw in the last part of the part that goes in the trunk and the rest is almost finished too. So it's, uh, it's a big moment because uh, I edited out a lot of stuff. But I've been really building this so slowly over the past month almost. <laughs> I'm just gonna screw this and this part is finished. So it's a great moment because um, actually everything so far went completely to plan. So I did not expect that. So let's attach the last screws of the trunk box. What an idiot. I can't believe I did everything perfectly. And, and then I noticed this. Look at this shit. This is supposed to align here like this. Like this, I completely screwed it completely in the wrong position. Look at this shit. I've been screwing like a maniac and it's all wrong. This is supposed to be further here. What a fucking idiot. Look how shit it looks. Look, me. What, what am I thinking? Like I'm screwing this like a maniac for 20 minutes. What am I, what, what the fuck is wrong with me? Fuck myself. Now I'm gonna be driving and knowing in the back of my mind that there's useless holes everywhere here. I'm gonna be knowing in the back of my mind that I'm mildly retarded. Right underneath there, there's holes that make no sense. The final piece with which everything is gonna come together and the whole thing is gonna come alive now. Oh yeah. Look at this fit. Oh my balls. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's starting to vibrate. Do you feel it a bit? You see? It's vibrating a bit. It's coming alive. As I just finished the trunk box a few minutes ago, it's like uh, standing there and uh, exactly right under the last part I finished. Huh? Standing there uh, as a sign of glory. I think that's a good omen. Ooh, oh yeah. So now I'm very happy because it's finally time to put the trunk box of the car house inside the car for the first time and see if it fits. To achieve this tight fit, the only way to get it in is perpendicularly like this and rotate it once it's inside. And then... It is too much the nice. It worked. That was a very satisfactory moment. It is too much the nice. Today we received a new part that I'm working on right now. The folding bracket for the feet. Look at this beauty. It's very solid and it's very black. Oh yeah. I made a little test here. It seems to be working. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, look at this fold of a foot. Then you unfold the foot. So this is the sleeping surface. And here we go. Boom! It's really solid. 
Once I was done laughing like a mermaid, adjusting all the feet to the exact height took me a few hours of sawing and sanding. For everyone uh, gluing stuff on their, their planks of wood that are varnished with flaxseed or linseed oil, uh, you, you kind of remove the oil on the parts that you're going to glue. Uh, if you want your glue to go sticky sticky, you need the surface not to be greasy at all. So, of course you don't have to do it, but if you want to do it properly, it doesn't take much effort. And now you're sure that the glue is going to be very happy. And you always want to make your glue happy. Nobody wants an unhappy glue. Always use a colorful sock to remove flaxseed oil. Always use one of the official textbook gluing patterns to ensure optimal grip. Now each segment of the bed has its foldable feet screwed in. I'm about to drill my last hole. Eight millimeter screws. I will tie the two boards together. The time has come to install the whole setup, starting with the middle section that attaches into the trunk box. I picked these sounds for my version, but you can customize the mechanism sound to your own taste. This is extremely sturdy so far. Now the final section in the front of the car where the upper body will rest on. But these sounds are hardwired into the mechanism so you have to keep them. But good thing they are really top quality. And the final fixation. Just to keep the two planks together. You don't really need even to bolt them. I have some bolts underneath to tie them if needed, but I don't think that's really needed. This is already so solid like this. It cannot move. Here we go. It's finished. <laughs> oh, no, now we're going on a trip. It's really finished. It's been like over a month of work. And right now it's, it's finished. I have nothing else to screw. That's gonna change pretty soon. What a beauty. Well, I guess there is just one thing I forgot to do. It's to try it out. <laughs> so we're gonna do the test with this really doomed one. This kind of rotting one. Ooh. Ooh. Pressure. It hasn't broken so far. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh, it's mega comfortable. Yeah. I'm never sleeping in a house anymore. Oh, this is really nice, huh? It's not moving, huh? It's not making any screechy, scratchy noises. <laughs> it's just gonna break all in a sudden. So, very soon, we're gonna be getting it on the move. Oh, it's perfect. For this installation to be viable, there are a few more non-optional things we need to make. First, we need to be able to close all the windows and not suffocate from carbon monoxide too often. So here we are at my friend Roger, who is a genius woodworker, musician and quite a character, to cut out a plank of wood that will fit tightly in one of the windows left half open. <coughs> protect it against the elements. I'm using this very terrible brush that leaves uh, fibers all over the place. And here is a common ventilation grid with mosquito net in the back that I simply screwed on top of the hole Roger made in the board. Let's try it out. So this way is supposed to make it a bit harder to remove from the outside of the car. I will also add a car window rubber at the bottom of the plank to ensure water can't drip inside if it rains. The other crucial thing we need is to get some sun protection. 
Not only to prevent the population from trying to snap priceless photos of my naked body inside, but also to prevent the interior from reaching crazy temperatures in summer and get some dark in the morning while I snore. For this, I'm using an aluminized an alum I'm using an alumin an alumin an alumin an alumin an aluminized mm, an aluminized foam normally meant for garage doors isolation. Take your time getting the weird shapes right and you'll have full sun protection for all the windows. What to do with this terrible ugly piece of uh, raw car here? Nobody wants to see raw car inside a car. So I was first thinking of a piece of uh, dark fabric just to cover it up. But wouldn't it be nicer to have a continuity of wood here that just makes all this space usable? without having doomed pieces of metal sticking in your ass. So we're gonna install this right now. These little attachments that are normally for the back seats are gonna come in so handy. Look, 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 look carefully. It's gonna happen really fast. Look really carefully. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, what? What is this kind of tool? Oh, look, look very carefully. So funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> look at this. It's already <laughs> still moving a bit. Okay, I just need to put the other one. Voila. Yeah. <laughs> Could add two more in the middle, but I don't think it's necessary. Sorry about the background noise, I assume we won't have the morons going nowhere in the background over there. The other reason I made this is because uh, we're gonna have solar panels on the roof and a big battery. I don't know where to put it. Now I know, it's gonna go here under the bed. So the bed goes here, uh, some, somewhere. And underneath we can have the electric setup with the wires going in the doom hole down there that nobody wants to see, very clean. And the last tweak you need to do before you're ready to go on your expedition. Because nobody wants a carpet on his head to have to keep clean while he's being chased by a boar in a swamp at 2 a.m. So that's it guys, the cow house, the cow house, the car house is completely finished. If you're using this video as an inspiration to do your own car house, feel free to let me know if there's some parts or explanation that were too doomed and you need some uh, clarification. I'm really here to help. If you happen to have the same car, a Dacia Sandero, and you would like to have the measurements to make your own, that's also possible. Now there is a big part that I'm going to skip in this video. It is the electric setup because I'm installing a solar panel on the roof to power a fridge, 40 liters, a real fridge compressor, and have a USB output for charging and also 12 volt for laptop or charging batteries and stuff like that. So for someone like me who never did any of this, it's very complicated. So I might make a different video about that. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. Maybe I put it together to show uh, the whole system exactly what you need to do if you want a similar system. So I'm very excited to show you the final result with the electricity and everything ready to go. So now, after loading the car, I'm gonna be ready to go. I'm gonna be taking off in a few days. Shit, what am I doing? <sighs> Fuck, is this normal?
I'm gonna be just like that uh, in the nature all the time with just a car. It's gonna be super weird, huh? So if you want to see how that goes and see how the car house does in the real world, feel free to like this video and subscribe because I'm gonna be posting more and of the this whole experience. So I hope you liked all this. I hope this inspires you maybe to make your own weird project, no matter what it is, and uh, go through with it, go to the end of it without ever stopping, and you'll be surprised at the end. I'm, I'm pretty surprised myself. Not only you can do it even if you don't know anything about it, but it opens up some uh, new perspectives of uh, what you're gonna do in your life. It makes you quite happy. Uh, uh, right now I'm quite happy. Well, I don't, I don't look quite happy because I have a fucked face, but uh, really, uh, this is me being uh, almost ecstatic. So see you in the next videos, and uh, happy unconventional, irregular, and weird projects to everyone.